We are five days away from fundamentally transforming the United States of America. I'll make our government open and transparent so that anyone can ensure that our business is the people's business. And as president, I'm going to make it impossible for congressmen or lobbyists to slip pork barrel projects or corporate welfare into laws when no one's looking. Because when I'm president, meetings where laws are written will be more open to the public, no more secrecy. That's a commitment I make to you as president. When there's a bill that ends up on my desk as president, you, the public, will have five days to look online and find out what's in it before I sign it. When there are meetings between lobbyists and a government agency, we'll put as many, as po many of those meetings as possible online for every American to watch. When there's a tax bill being debated in Congress, you will know the names of the corporations that would benefit and how much money they would get. And we will put every corporate tax break and every pork barrel project online for every American to see. You will know who asked for them, and you can decide whether your representative is actually representing you. Not negotiating behind closed doors, but bringing all parties together uh, and uh, broadcasting those negotiations on C-SPAN so that the American people can see what the choices are. Because part of what we have to do is enlist the American people in this process. These negotiations will be on C-SPAN, uh, and so the public will be part of the conversation and will see the choices that are being made. We will work on uh, this process publicly, streaming over the net. I'm in this race to take, tell the lobbyists in Washington that their days of setting the agenda are over. They will not work in my White House. It's when lobbyists set the agenda, and that's why they won't drown out your voices anymore when I am President of the United States of America. Having inherited a trillion dollar deficit that will take a long time for us to close. We need to focus on what we need to move the economy forward, not on what's nice to have. And that's why on Monday I held a fiscal summit to come up with a plan to put us on a more sustainable path. And that is why as we develop a full budget that will come out this spring, we're going to go through our books page by page, line by line, to eliminate waste and inefficiency. We have already identified $2 trillion in deficit reductions that will help us cut our deficit in half by the end of my first term. The process whereby Guantanamo will be closed uh, no later than one year from now. So let me be absolutely clear. If you are a family making less than $250,000 a year, you will not see your taxes go up. I am not an ideologue. I'm not. Pay for what we spend by the middle of the decade. If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, period. If you've got health insurance, you like your doctor, you like your plan, you can keep your doctor, you can keep your plan. No matter what you've heard, if you like your doctor or health care plan, you can keep it. For the first time in more than a decade, imports accounted for less than half of what we consumed. Job growth was the weakest of any economic expansion between 2001 and 2008 since World War II. I don't want to run auto companies. I don't want to run banks. I think we can get a lot of work done fast. Uh, when I met with the governors, all of them have projects that are shovel ready. Shovel ready was not as uh, <laughs> shovel ready as we expected. Uh, I would convene a uh, continuous advisory meeting with not just Democrats but Republicans specifically on national security issues because there is a long tradition uh, that our differences in foreign policy should end 
at the water's edge. But I, but I do want to make this point, uh, and I think it's important. Uh, on the one hand, uh, the majority has to be inclusive. Mark my words. It will not be six months before the world tests Barack Obama like they did John Kennedy. Uh, I'm going to spend some money on the key issues that we've got to work on. You may have seen your health care premiums go up. We've got to reform health care to help you and your budget. We are going to have to deal with energy because we can't keep on borrowing from the Chinese and sending money to Saudi Arabia. And what I've proposed, you'll hear Senator McCain say, well, he's proposing a whole bunch of new spending, but actually I am cutting more than I'm spending so that it will be a net spending cut. The key is whether or not we've got priorities that are working for you as opposed to those who've been dictating uh, policy in Washington lately, and that's mostly lobbyists and special interests. We've got to put an end to that. My administration has a job to do as well. And that job is to get this economy back on its feet. I love these folks who help get us in this mess and then suddenly say, well, this is Obama's economy. That's fine. Give it to me. When I arrived in the White House, I had a $1.3 trillion deficit wrapped in a bow waiting for me. Now, I, I'm bringing this up not to relitigate the past. I just don't want to relive the past. You know, it was hard enough. It's been hard enough trying to rescue this economy the first time. I don't want to have to do it a second time. So if somebody wants to build a coal power plant, they can. It's just that it will bankrupt them because they're going to be charged a huge sum for all that uh, greenhouse gas that's being emitted. The long-term deficit and debt that we have accumulated is unsustainable. We can't keep on just borrowing from China or borrowing from other countries. Businesses will be less likely to invest and open shop in a country that seems unwilling or unable to balance its books. And if our creditors start worrying that we may be unable to pay back our debts, that could drive up interest rates for everybody who borrows money, making it harder for businesses to expand and hire or families to take out a mortgage. While well, we must add to our deficits in the short term to provide immediate relief to families and get our economy moving, it is only by restoring fiscal discipline over the long run that we can produce sustained growth and shared prosperity. And that is precisely the purpose of the budget I'm submitting to Congress today. In keeping with my commitment to make our government more open and transparent, this budget is an honest accounting of where we are and where we intend to go. Just as a family has to make hard choices about where to spend and where to save, so do we as a government. I've got two daughters, nine, year old, nine years old and six years old. I'm going to teach them, first of all, about values and morals. But if they make a mistake, I don't want them punished with a baby. So I, I, I've been a little amused over the last couple of days where people have been having these rallies <laughs> about tax, taxes. You would think they would be saying thank you. Start a new program? Go ahead. But you've got to cut another one to pay for it. That's how we'll make sure we're spending your money wisely. And our efforts to prevent a second depression have added another $1 trillion to our national debt. That, too, is a fact. I am a, a believer in knowing what you're doing when you apply for a job. Uh, and I think that if I were to seriously consider running on a national ticket, I would essentially have to start now before having served a day in the Senate. Now, there are some people who are, might be comfortable doing that, uh, but I'm not one of those people. Now, let me just be clear here. Despite what some have claimed, the cost of the Recovery Act is only a very small part of our current budget imbalance. The, the last thing I will say, though, let me say uh, this about health care and the health care debate, because I think it also bears on a whole lot of other issues. 
If you look at the package that we've presented, and there's some stray cats and dogs that got in there that we were eliminating. We were in the process of eliminating. For example, for example, we said from the start uh, that uh, or, that it was going to be important uh, for us to be consistent in saying to people, if you can have your, if you want to keep the health insurance you got, you can keep it. That you're not going to have anybody getting in between you and your doctor in your decision making. And I think that some of the provisions that got snuck in uh, might have violated that pledge. And so we were in the process of scrubbing this and making sure that it's tight. Of the three and a half million jobs that will be created and saved over the next two years as a result of this recovery plan, 400,000 will be jobs rebuilding our crumbling roads, bridges and schools, repairing our faulty levees and dams, connecting nearly every American to broadband, and upgrading the buses and trains the commuters take every day. The question is, how are we going to make sure that people are getting back to work? Jobs must be our number one focus in 2010. As president, that's my commitment to you, to do everything I can to make sure our economy is growing, creating jobs, and strengthening our middle class. Not a day goes by that I'm not focused on your jobs. I'll continue also to fight for what the American people care most about. New jobs, higher wages, and faster economic growth. We are five days away from fundamentally transforming the United States of America.